I'm Daniel, um, and my role is very much that of the assistant. I'm just helping Ruth to facilitate today. So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to hand over to her. Um, but before I do, I just really wanted to welcome you um, to this EMCC Global GPS Dialogue. Um, it does build on conversations that were started at the, the Global Provider Summit, and, and the theme for that was around co-creating our profession. Um, and that theme extends across this and, and another follow-on um, uh, dialogues and Ruth's dialogue today and our conversation today is very much about helping us to explore what the key issues and the key opportunities that senior leaders face today and how through coaching we might support them best or better so whether you're here as a coach or here as somebody who is a leader or both or somebody who's interested in the development of leaders, I think there'll be a huge amount in this dialogue for you. Um, there's quite a lot of us here, which I'm really glad about. This is great. <laughs> it's, it's a subject that's kind of, I have enthusiasm for. It's great to see other people have too. Um, so to give us all the best possibility to kind of hear each other and, and be heard, there's going to be two breakout group discussions and everyone's voice is valuable. So please, particularly in the breakout groups, please make space for others to talk and be off, open to offering your own perspectives too. Um, it's great that you've got your cameras on and that we can all see each other. Um, and that particularly is true in the breakouts when you'll be in smaller groups. You, everyone's muted, but there is a chat function. Um, if you can find it, it's kind of down the bottom of your screen, probably with a speech bubble. Um, and in there, you might want to share questions or comments or ideas. And I'm going to take special responsibility for trying to keep an eye on that um, and bringing your questions into the main room dialogue. If we don't get to the questions in this space, then there is some networking um, afterwards and we can try and pick all, all of those things up then. Um, this main dialogue is last, scheduled to last about 75 minutes. And you've already met Nicola, um, who's going to make sure that we do run on time. Um, so without any further delay, let me now hand us over to Ruth. Thank you very much, uh, Diane, and thank you, Nicola. And wherever you are, um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, um, welcome. And thanks very much indeed for, for your interest and for joining the dialogue. Um, what I'm going to start by helping us all just arrive. I'd like to invite those of you that would like to to maybe just spend a moment to um, put down anything you're holding, maybe stand up if you've been sitting down or just plant your feet on the floor, maybe sit up um, and take a couple of deep breaths. <sighs> I certainly will be. Um, and just maybe take a moment to have a think about what you notice about how you're feeling. How, how's your body? What are you sensing in your body at the moment? And, and then what about what's going on in your head? What are you thinking? Where are your thoughts at the moment? But what are you observing around where you are at the moment? And now bringing your attention to the dialogue and maybe thinking what, what is it you want from this next hour or so that we have together? And now with our focus on the, uh, the dialogue, let's begin. I will endeavor to share my screen. So as, as Nicola and Diane have said, what we're here to do today is explore what senior leaders need from coaching now. Um, and particularly in the context within which we're all operating, what specifically is, is coming up and how can we best meet that need? Um, as you have seen. Um, there's myself, I'm Ruth Simpson. Um, I, my work is focused on enabling people to respond and adapt to change um, as a coach and work with individuals and teams and really delighted that Diane can join us uh, today as well. Um, Diane's been coaching, she had a corporate background and has been coaching since 2000, um, experienced um, master practitioner and also um, 
particularly interested in or leading authentically and purposefully. Um, so we'll have a lot, uh, a lot to, to add a, as well. So um, my aim is to that we challenge our practice and develop new ideas. I think unless we step away, step back and think about things, if we're not careful, we can go down the same kind of routes. And I think especially at the moment, what's happening for the senior leaders, uh, there is so much going on. So how can we make sure as our, our practice is as, as productive, as, is as effective as possible? Um, and, and maybe hopefully you'll get some new ideas that you can take into your practice. Um, and the, the input from Diane and I will also be based on uh, our experience. And I'm doing some PhD research in this field. Um, so it's particularly relevant. But a bit about more, a bit more about that later. So in a moment, Nicola will put up a poll um, I would just love to understand some questions in terms of, um, as, as it says, do you work as a coach, a user, a buyer, or both of the above? Um, are you a senior leader, someone who works with senior leaders, or are you just interested in this field? Um, well, thanks very much indeed for that. It, it just helps me focus um, uh, fo focus our work. Um, so great in, in terms of coaches, obviously we'll, we'll focus that on practice. Um, lovely that we've got some senior leaders as well really would value your inputs um in terms of you know how you're feeling if you what you have to contribute to that uh, and also in terms of working with senior leaders what are you experiencing at the moment um because that will really help us when we come to to work out what this actually means uh for for coaches so thank you very much indeed for um for completing the poll so my research study um, this is the reason this, this is particular interest for me at the moment. Um, so I'm doing an action research study exploring group coaching for the transition to a senior leadership position. Um, and this was based on my work in leadership development and with senior leaders, both one-to-one um, -one and in teams in terms of recognizing this significant shift that happens uh, when you move away from the functional to the more strategic when it's away from task and more towards identity and relationships. Um, uh, it's a two part study that I'm doing. I'm, uh, I've done a small exploratory study um, to ensure that the, the work I'm going on to do is grounded in experience. Um, so I've done some exploration around what coaching for the transition looks like and needs to consider. And then part two, probably later on this year, um, given companies have quite a lot to deal with at the moment, um, I'll be doing some um, group coaching with leaders about to make th the transition. And it, it just strikes me, given the, the many, many demands that senior leaders have on their plates at the moment, what, what is the best that we can do for them? Um, so, that's, uh, so that's where my interest uh, comes from. Um, uh, you, you will, I'm sure, be aware of the significant percentage that are according to reports deemed to fail 30 to 50 percent fail to achieve their goals when they make that tra transition um, and, and it is a really difficult role so that's that's my interest so what's your experiences um, this is what we're going to do now is break out into um, groups of about five or six um, I, I'm, I'm sure um, you being coaches, you will all do this naturally anyway, um, but it is incredible the number of groups sometimes you go with and nobody introduces themselves. So perhaps you just want a brief introduction, your name, your relationship to the topic. And then these are just ideas for questions. Um, the, the, I think that the purpose is what is the experience of coaching senior leaders now? What, what are you seeing? Um, what are they asking for? And what are they noticing they need? Are they two different things? or is there an alignment? Um, and, and what are you actually working on? What sort of things do you need to bring into your practice? Um, either what tools, techniques, or how do you need to be for senior leaders at the moment? Um, just give you a moment to put in the chat so everyone can see and preface with need. What are the needs? How could you summarize the needs that you're experiencing that senior leaders have? So in the chat, preface with need and then just just capture some of the needs that that um, that you experienced. Whilst you're you're doing that, I'll pick up on some of the themes that came through early on um, and we'll we'll have a, a dialogue for about uh, dialogue. Well, I'll, I'll share some thoughts and we'll pick up Diane. We'll pick up some questions over the next 10, 15 minutes before we go into back into breakout. 
One of the, the things that came through in the chat early on are questions about resilience, um, well-being. Um, and, and, you know, Diane and I were both saying there's been this real focus on the functional at the moment, understandably, the very survival of the business. How do we get through? And there, in, in some ways, the senior leaders are ending up having to hold an awful lot of anxiety. Um, so there's, will the business survive? How will the business survive? What shape does it need to be in? Um, and, and so there's, there's that on one level. Then there's the people they're working with and how do we actually perform as a team given this difficult business environment? So there's a lot of pressure on the functional. And, and certainly with the team, someone mentioned teams, the, the senior teams that I'm working with, and they'll, they'll come and they'll say, yeah, we, we need to do something about ways of working. And so we've done a bit of work on ways of working, but then they've gone straight to functional. They've gone straight to task because there's this, we've got to focus on the task at all costs. And then when you challenge them around, well, what about the ways of working? Well, yeah, yeah, we need to look at that, but what about the task? And so they're not looking at it on a team relational front, but they're also not looking at it on a very individual front. So the leader, the senior leader holds the business and the anxiety there, the team and their own anxiety. And it is incredible, isn't it? I don't know how many of you have started the uh, meetings with, uh, with clients and said, so how are you doing? Straight into task. Well, we're down on this numbers. We've had to furlough this many. We've got problems. Yeah, and how are you? And one of the reasons to, to start with the, the exercise we did was just perhaps there's a tip or a trick is there something you can do just at the moment to enable senior leaders to to try and meet this need of asking well how am I um because it's often in just talking about that there will be it starts to meet some of that need um for for resilience um and and, and for well-being because then once you've addressed that you're then in a much better place to focus on the team and then ultimately the organization. Um, so that was one of the needs. Diane, what, have you had a chance uh, to see I'm, anything else? I am, come I'm, through? I'm reading, people, people are typing way faster than I'm able to read. So oh, forgive goodness. me if I don't pick up your, your comment, but I am noticing that um, something that I, I picked up myself a lot, which is there is a lot of demand on organizations and teams and individuals to become more agile to become more flexible, to deal with uncertainty better. Um, and for um, a lot of the leaders that we're working with, that, that demand is in the context of actually some very challenging, what we would describe as functional circumstances, in other words, pressure on results. So you've got this, you've got this kind of dichotomy of, of, of pressures um, and um, it's, it's creating a situation in which leaders can only be successful when they're really leading from the self. If, so when they're really um, clear about not just what results they need to achieve for the organization, but what the purpose of the organization is, you know, why are we here as a team? When they're really clear about their own purpose, um, you know, why am I here? Why do I care about the organizational purpose and, and our results? Um, and and the, the, the kind of, the interesting dilemma is that we know that that's true and yet everyone's far too busy to actually take the time to think about it apparently so breaking that circuit getting people to to stop and pause and think and to really think about themselves is quite is quite a challenge i think um we use the phrase attach your own oxygen mask first for people to help them to think about the fact that if they if they don't, if they're not paying attention to themselves as a leader, they're not really thinking about who they are as a leader, paying attention to their own resilience, well-being, motivation, then they have no hope of helping anybody else. Um, so. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's the perhaps the fear that underpins this is I should know the answer. What is the answer? Um, so I'm I'm feeling fatigued and exhausted, and I'm dealing with all of this anxiety but I should know what's going on and you can't possibly know the right decision um, to make because so many things are changing at the moment as well. So there's, there's kind of not looking after yourself and there's not 
you know, in some ways it's kind of what it, we, we should rephrase it. And what's the worst things that leaders are doing? They're not looking after themselves, which means they're not able to make the best decisions in a very difficult environment where they can't possibly know. As we, as we know, the senior leaders have often achieved what they have because they're good at controlling things. They're good at getting results. But it's very difficult when you haven't got you know, you maybe set the targets for last year and you didn't meet those. So how do you cope now in terms of setting the targets in this area of not knowing? And so the, the, the team point becomes really important because suddenly the leader can't possibly know all the answers. So how do they engage with the team of people that they're working with, either as peers or their direct reports? And to what extent does that need them to have that ability to, to be vulnerable with all of them and say, well, how are we going to, to sort out the answers because I haven't got them all um, myself, which is another reason why the oxygen mask is, you have to be able to look after yourself well enough and confidence in yourself well enough to be able to then have that conversation with, with perhaps those people around you. So, you know, in summary, and it, it's really interesting in terms of what, when we had the discussion in November, um, that there was the, there were these kind of three themes there were the the needs of the senior leaders perhaps recognizing they weren't in great shape in terms of their mental health and their well-being and how they were feeling then there's the very real business challenge that they're facing as well and you know the the, the resources that they're having to deal with because the people aren't in great shape either so it, it's it's almost like it's a perfect storm of challenges that are coming together has anything else come through uh, either nicola or, or, or well, Diane I'm, I'm on i'm noticing the there's chat. quite a lot about the virtual environment and i and i do think that that is really relevant particularly for leaders who haven't perhaps developed comfort and skill in leading in a virtual environment because a lot of the the, the levers, if you like, the levers that they had previously that they used to understand what was going on in their organisation, pick up on signals, um, to communicate and, 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 and to motivate others, they're now missing those levers because they're, they're now having to, to work remotely with people. Um, and that's more difficult in some organisations than others, because in some organisations, that was pretty much the norm anyway. So there's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the same um, from one organization or one team to another. And absolutely, and I think in some ways, these ways of working, a lot of the, the things that happened kind of happened without being noticed in terms of relationships. Um, when you were able to meet together for a meeting, I was working with one matrix team and um, they, they get together once a quarter uh, physically in the same place and they connected with each other and they went to the pub for a drink afterwards, had dinner. And I think they have not realized how important that was in terms of just kind of greasing the wheels, if you like, of getting things done. They realized they'd not touched the WhatsApp group. Previously it had been really, because of course, every time they met, they met once a quarter and they connected and, lots of things kicked off and that would kind of see them through till the next quarter. But because of the business pressures, they're focusing on the functional task. And, and so it's not happening, it's not happened. And they've realized that could be a direct result of the virtual time because they have so little time together, they wanna to make the most of it. And let's be honest, everybody's filled meetings back to back with their agendas. So they just, what, what can we get out of this time together in and out and, and straight away? So, you know, to what extent are senior leaders having to deal with something, right, this is here, this is now, this is March 2021. Every different country is going to be in a different state in terms of emergence from this pandemic. And what is, what's really important now? Um, what's really important now for me as an individual for the team and for the organization what are the priorities given we don't exactly know how things are going to pan out and then perhaps you can use that to to focus on where you put your energy because things will change we'll, we'll go through this you know in the classic transition stage you know there's there's that kind of messy disorientating middle as we've coped with the disruption before we come out the other side um, into a new new state, whatever whatever state that will be. So, in terms of the needs, has anything else um, 
Has anything else arisen? Uh, there's a couple of things that I, think I just wanted to pick up on. Um, mm. I think, you know, uh, I think a couple of people have mentioned this, that we have to be careful about looking at this just from the point of view of, of coaches. We're, we're kind of interpreting leaders' needs with our kind of coaching language and our coaching eyes. Um, and, and that's absolutely true. We are in this discussion doing that. Leaders that I speak to talk about, I, I need to find a, a different way of leading, a, a way of leading that works effectively in this environment, a way of leading that I can sustain, a way of leading that um, that that uh, can works, creates more agility, creates more engagement, um, even though there isn't any certainty, that kind of thing. So, but of course it is different in different environments. So we do look quite a lot of work in the NHS, for example, that's a very specific environment right now. It has you know, very specific challenges that are not the same as an FMCG international company yeah, that, that's you know, facing, um, facing completely different challenges. So, so to be careful about, about two things, one about making sure that we think about this from the leader's point of view, not just with the kind of coaching mindset on, um, and also recognising that each individual leader, each individual team, each individual organisation, as well as facing similar circumstances, faces very unique circumstances. Yeah, thanks. And I, it was interesting on the chat um, earlier on, we picked up, there were comments about people asking about the, the engaging with senior leaders at the moment. And as you say, we come from a very separate position in terms of as coaches looking in on this and we may see the need and may think it could be tremendously useful but it's very difficult if someone's not if they can't see the need if the, the space that they are in um, and it's preempting the conversations that you're about to have in terms of what we as coaches can do um, but the last thing we can do I think is try and hammer on doors and say right you've got a problem here because this isn't happening um, because that just adds to the, the the confusion and the challenges that they're already facing. Um, even even as you say, Diane, when when clients engage you and say we've got a need because we've got a problem here, and then once you explore the problem, it's still difficult for them to engage with with doing very much about it. Um, so so that I think there's a real issue there in terms of awareness of need and readiness to and energy to act on it. I saw somewhere in the in the chat, the fatigue that is so incredibly real, isn't it? That organizations of all shapes and sizes are feeling. And, you know, there's almost this, this different, there's fatigue on one side of organizations who are really battling away, busier than ever, have an awful lot of pressure on them. And then there's also fatigue from the other side of people who are perhaps furloughed, who haven't been able to work, who are perhaps self-employed and, you know, wondering that there's almost these two kind of two universes that are going on. And, and it, it comes back to that individuality and uniqueness of the situation. We may all, all have experienced a global pandemic, but we've all experienced it very individually and uniquely and, and understanding how that fatigue is, is impacting everything that it's possible to see um, because when you're fatigued, you're not able perhaps to look with clarity at the situation you're in. Anything else to add? Sorry, you can't help but get drawn by the chat that's going on, um, yeah. you know, about the, the anxiety um, that there is. Um, I've noticed quite a lot of mention of trust as well, and I do think that's really important. There's something here about leaders needing to find ways to build and sustain trust. Um, with their teams, with their organisations, with their customers, perhaps, um, and perhaps, you know, perhaps that's that's true of, of us as coaches as well. Would be my view that we we need to find ways to build and sustain trust with our clients and potential clients, so that when we're talking to them about how we can help or <laughs> um, trying to get them to to take time out to reflect rather than trying to solve the problem with more activity yeah by, it's by, a, by doing it faster then yeah yeah it's, it's the default position isn't it mm -hmm. you know there will be some leaders for whom they have been able to to use this as a situation to reflect to learn and to grow 
Um, so this is perhaps where some of these reflective practices have really come to the fore for those that have been able to, for those that are able to, to recognise, you know, the limits of what we can do at the moment. So let's be ready for when it really gets back and we've got the energy versus those for whom it, it was just action and do and we'll just revert to the habitual ways of being. Um, it's all those, you know, to what extent the senior leaders have trust in themselves to embrace the difference now um, because my usual way out of it is just to work harder and work more and put the pressure on because then at least I feel I'm doing something versus those that are able to find the space to reflect and to act intentionally and purposefully. So having had the, 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 the discussion, the dialogue, you've had it in your groups about what the needs are, that there is, there is clearly the business need um, there is clearly the, this, this, this drive to act in response to that. And what about the, the needs of the senior leaders um, in, in terms of what, you know, how can we best address some of these needs? What, what, what's particularly useful? What are you finding you're doing that's serving the purpose? How as coaches can we best meet that indeed. need? Thank you. Diane and I were saying, you know, we would have loved to have been in the dialogues with you all um, uh, and, and hopefully you enjoyed uh, and found some, some richness and value from them. Um, when it, a couple of things, we've gone through the chat and was really interested. Someone was saying this was a coach's view of senior leaders. So if there's any senior leaders there or people think there are needs of senior leaders that we have not discussed, could you just pop that in the chat as, you know, preface it with need, um, be, because I'm just keen that, that we make the most of, of all the views and, and hear if there is something we are missing that senior leaders need and we are not, we have not discussed, please put it in there. Um, and now I'd just like to give you, an, uh, give you a moment to put in the chat what new ideas you've come up with. So if you just preface it with new idea, what's come out of the dialogue? That you think could be useful to meet these needs of the the senior leaders so i'll just give you a moment in the chat preface new idea and what some of the things have been coming up in the groups please and any senior leader needs um um great so um, someone was saying, I need how to accentuate the positive. I think so. Is that a senior leader need, a need that a senior leader has to focus on the positive? Rachel, I just picked that up. So do I? Yeah. Um, yeah, we had. Um, a, so we had a couple. So I, my, my sense was that we focused a lot on negative on. It's been quite a negative emphasis yeah. throughout yeah. the discussion, whereas actually a lot of the leaders that I'm working with and my experience is some of them have had very positive things come out of this experience. So how adaptable they are, how they've been able to pivot. Some have gone through massive growth in their businesses, which is also really challenging. Um, and I just think we need to balance the dialogue a bit so that we're not catastrophizing. Um, so I just wanted to make that point, that was all. And hugely valuable. Thank you very much indeed, absolutely. What is it the Chinese word for crisis is danger and opportunity. Um, and and, and you're, you're absolutely right. We have focused on that, that kind of negative, the hard side. Um, whereas for some people they have seen it. And, you know, Diana and I were talking about those leaders that were able to reflect and embrace it. This is an opportunity for change. I think it's, it's, it is difficult, isn't it? And it just shows how important it is that we do connect and talk with each other because, you know, your last three coaching sessions were all really negative. You can really get caught in a spiral of this is a disaster and everyone's in a terrible state. If anything, it does call for the role of supervision and connecting with people. Whereas you can walk out of some organizations um, and think, wow, there is some real positivity around here which brings us neatly on to this question of how can we best meet, meet that need? Um, and, and perhaps one of the, we'll, we'll, we'll obviously keep an eye on the, um, the, the, the chat in terms of your ideas that have come through, but I suppose there were a few key things that um, we really felt in terms of the ability of the coach to role model the best place to be, the best way to be in terms of ensuring we are as well and at our best as we can be 
to meet whatever is coming at us. And again, Rachel, picking up on that point, you know, you, you start a coaching meeting, you think you're going to get it's a disaster. And actually, it's really good. So how can we make sure we're not limited in our thinking of what we're going to be? So how can we be the best and role model that? Um, there's also a key role in being able to engage with the system that the leader is in and recognizing it's not just the individual, but it's the whole system within which they're operating um, and, and making sure that we bring that awareness to the situation. Um, and, and then I think there is this element of flexibility um, in terms of, again, I was not going in thinking, right, I've got a hammer, that's what I need to do. Um, but being flexible and agile in ourselves in terms of responding and, and asking that question, well, what is good here? You know, um, what, what are the positive things? That's not a dirty word in terms of what, what could be good. And maybe everyone's so fatigued and shattered that that's where they're feeling. But what, what has grown and what has come from this? Um, and, and I think that uh, another point, and, and I do, do add on this, but this role that we have to challenge in terms of challenge people's thinking, whether it's, it's the way they're feeling about themselves or the situation or what's possible, but, but to, to what extent are we uniquely well-placed to provoke thought um, in a way perhaps some other people can be? Clearly it, it requires that relationship of trust that needs to have been built, um, but perhaps creating that safe space that this balance of challenge and support at the moment is, is perhaps more important like, like never before. Dan, is there anything you'd like to add on that point? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I've been trying to, to read the, uh, the chat as it went through, and I think one thing that's coming up a lot that I would, I would definitely um, reflect to is um, the importance of being willing to hold space for people, um, of really um, using powerful listening um, as I don't I think sometimes when we're, we're we're like this over screens that that connection we we can underestimate the impact of really powerful listening even though we're not in the same room as as our as our clients um, I think there's something also that I'm, I'm picking up here around um, being willing to be more creative as you were saying Ruth just you know to 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 really extend our range and the ways in which we connect with people. Uh, I think many individuals, many organizations are seeing change that has been really collapsed into a shorter period of time. The COVID pandemic has, I suspect, catalyzed changes that were going to be happening anyway, or potentially were going to be happening anyway, and made them happen quicker. So people are really uh, are kind of dealing with that. Um, and I think we need to be willing to embrace that that kind of chaos, if you like, and, and to, to use some some perhaps more creative methodologies than 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 we might have been using in the past. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of us have been using very creative methods. So you know, I'm, I'm not kind of trying to typify us all, but I think for many coaches, um, habit of using just dialogue just using question and answer rather than anything else um you know, it might need to be addressed personal view perhaps um uh, controversial i look forward to hearing hearing you challenge me in the next networking session thank you very much indeed for for joining the the dialogue i think it has um it's been it's been great to see the interest around this and the the opportunities and the challenges that we're facing that coaches are concerned about being the best they can be at this 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 disruptive time um, and disruption can be for good and it can be for bad um, but i do hope that it has um, enabled you to think about the giving you the chance just to think about what senior leaders may be facing some of the issues some of the challenges some of the opportunities um, and it's given you some ideas um, as to how you can best best serve that need more moving forward. So thanks very much indeed for, for your time and for your engagement. And I do hope that, uh, that you've found something useful to take away from today. 